Let's go coast to coast with this weekend's action, starting with the Mavericks, who snapped the Bulls' nine-game winning streak on Sunday behind Luka Doncic's triple-double. Dallas has now won six straight games. And then we're going to also stick in the East because another team is cruising. The Raptors, they beat the Pelicans, and they also won their sixth straight game. And Fred Van Vliet, Fred Van Vliet has been rolling. He had another 30-point game with a season-high eight three pointers and you know since we're talking about streaks the Sixers they beat the Spurs on Friday that's also their sixth straight win I'm sensing a little bit of a theme here Joel Embiid has dropped 30 in each of those games so he joins Wilt Chamberlain and Allen Iverson as the only Sixers uh, to ever do that so now joining me to talk a little bit more on some of those topics is our senior writer Ramona Shelburne Ramona thank you so much good for hanging with us on NBA today it's always good to see you so Ramona what's led to Joel Embiid's 30 point streak here well he's healthy I mean that flat out that helps a lot when you're healthy and he came into the year and he was feeling great and then the first game of the year he knocks knees with Jonas Valanciunas and has a knee injury that plagues him for the first month of the season then he gets COVID and he's out for a couple of weeks there took some time to ramp back up but that time that he was out with COVID he told me over the weekend he said that actually allowed his knee to get healthier and so when you see him out there like the only way he was ever going to get better with the knee injury was to rest it well it wasn't the way he wanted to rest it, but it gave him that time to, right. to start feeling Well, you better. can't talk about silver linings with COVID, yeah. but if there is one, maybe you can point to that. It's yep. also hard to talk about the Sixers and not mention Ben Simmons. Yep. Is there anything new on the Ben Simmons front? Well, as we sit here today on January 10th, we are one month away from the trade deadline, Malika. And there's not much going on right now. It's obviously going to ramp up as we get closer to the trade deadline. But the Sixers are in a position where they feel comfortable if they can't find the trade that they're looking for, where they return an all-star caliber player for Ben Simmons. They're comfortable not trading Ben Simmons before that deadline, keeping him on the roster, and then potentially bringing him to hope them hope that he can come back and play for him this year. Now, there's a month. They have a month to get this done. Um, and you expect trade interest to ramp up as we get closer to that deadline. But they're, they're in a position now where they are sending the signals they're sending are we're comfortable not doing anything if we don't have the two, if the trade we want. February 10th, I have that date circled on <laughs> my calendar. But a theme of what we were yep. just talking about is win streaks. And the Raptors, they Ooh. have now won six in a row. So what's changed for them? You know what? They're healthy and they're playing the lineup that Masai Ujiri has always wanted to try with a, with a team, which is just a bunch of tall guys out there, 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, they can all guard one to five. And one tough, strong guard in Fred Van Vliet. He told me he wanted to play this back when he was in Denver, when they had Kenyon Martin and Andre Miller was that big guard. Now they have Fred Van Vliet as that big guard. And it's an interesting matchup for everybody who goes against them because you have a 6'8 guy guarding your center, but also guarding your point guard. Mm. And it's switchy, they're athletic, the guys love playing that way, and they're healthy. And it's interesting right now, right? Because up in Toronto, the rules are a little bit different. Yep. So we're seeing that they don't have crowds. They have friends yeah. and family more similarly to the bubble. And that's an adjustment for players. We also know that if you cross the border and then mm -hmm. you get COVID, you're going to be there for a while. And so some teams, yeah. they're not traveling their best players yep. because they don't want to be in that kind of sticky situation. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't take away from the fact that the Raptors, though, they have still yep. won six straight. So. Lastly, Ramona, we haven't seen Kawhi Leonard since the second round of the playoffs mm -hmm. last season. So is there any update on how his rehab is going? Well, his rehab is going great. From all accounts, he looks great on the court. And the, and he looks like he's in a position where if if, the, if he's feeling right at the right time, he passes all the benchmarks, there's a chance he returns this season. And everybody who sees him, they, they, they try not to get too excited, right? Like there's this sense like, man, Kawhi looks great. He looks like he can play right now. But every time I, I call and check on it, the, the answer is always with an ACL, you want to be extremely careful. So even if you look good, if you feel good, you still have to hit those benchmarks. And so there's a chance, but the Clippers have been having a, a rough time without Paul George lately. They, Absolutely. And, and I think as we get further into the year, the, the question has to be asked, should you rush that back? Should you should you get Kawhi back this year? Should you push Paul George to come back from that elbow injury? And I, and they're in that spot right now where even though Kawhi looks great, they'll have to make the decision. Well, and they on. have an interesting benchmark coming up tomorrow against the Nuggets. That is going to be an interesting game. Ramona, yep. thank you so much Thanks for joining us. And Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.